Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hip Knits podcast. This is episode 77. My name is Hannah and I am recording this podcast from northern Tasmania in Australia. I am a Swedish expat and I have lived in Australia for quite a few years now. I live here with my Australian husband and our two daughters and they are eight and four years old. This podcast is mainly about knitting and also about other fibre related crafts and things that that I um, get into, get up to. <laughs> um, you can find me as Rosehip Chick on Ravelry and on Instagram. And I do have an Etsy shop where I sell my hand dyed yarn, and that shop is called Rosehip Island. And um, yes, you can just go there, um, go to Etsy and search for Rosehip Island, and you'll find what I have in the shop. Thank you so much if you're joining me for the first time. Thank you. Thank you for taking some time and, and giving this podcast a chance. And thank you so, so much if you're coming back and joining me again um, for another episode. I love these moments when I get to sit down, have a cup of tea and talk about my knitting um, and not uh, <laughs> like in my, my normal life. If I talk about knitting, I'll just get faces looking like what are you talking about and why would I be interested in you talking about this so um although I can't see you I don't <laughs> know what you're doing at the moment when you're watching me I still feel like I'm talking about knitting and wool and fiber and things that I love and there's actually someone out there who's interested and I love any comments and feedback that I get from the podcast um so thank you so much for watching and being a part of the Rose Hip Knits podcast community. Um, what can I say? I'm doing this a little bit differently today. I normally would record a podcast when I have a home day with my four-year-old and I would do it sometime during the day when she's having a bit of relaxed time uh, watching TV or she's happy doing drawing or something like that. Um, today I am um, able to do my... <laughs> my out of the house job from home <laughs> if that makes sense so I'm actually working from home today so I thought I'd before I start I record an episode so the kids just got off to to school my husband's at work and I thought I have some time where I can record this podcast before starting doing actual my actual job so we'll see how that goes um it is a, I think it's going to be a nice, beautiful spring day today. It's a bit windy outside, but the garden is looking lovely. As you can see, we still have um, daffodils growing in, in the garden. So we've had them for quite a few weeks now. The tulips are starting to come, um, but um, yes, sort of daffodils start early spring or end of winter, and there's a two a few different types of the daffodils so we we're on these daffodil types are different than the ones that I would have had on the podcast two weeks ago and four weeks ago anyway tulips are, tulips are coming next so there's a few up already but maybe um, next time I podcast I'll have some beautiful tulips to share with you I can see now that podcasting in the morning means that I have the sun coming in from the side and I'm hoping it's not um, creating some funny um, shading or anything. I think I'll just I'll just go with what we have now going because, as I said, I have work to um, do after this, and uh, yes, I don't want to make it too complicated. I did have some feedback last time on on the sound and um, things that I was asking about, and think there's been an improvement in the sound since I got my microphone so um, I'm happy about that uh, but yes always um, feel free to send me any messages or comments about anything about the podcast okay so um, I mainly have knitting uh, today to share with you things that I've been working on since last time and um, uh, I haven't had any really 
exciting things happened since my last episode. I think I was sick last time I, I spoke to you or I just I was coughing and getting over it cold and that just sort of stayed in my body for a while if that makes sense. I've just been just feeling a bit worn out and tired and now I'm I'm getting I feel like I'm I'm getting coming back now. I'm um have more energy and I've been um just you know feeling like I want to clean and spring cleaning and sorting and organizing and, and things like that. So I guess that's a good sign means that um I'm feeling better and um What else was I going to say? So I have been doing a little bit of dyeing, not a, a great deal, but a little bit, and I thought I'd um, share some of that with you at the end of the episode. But I'll um, I probably just put um, a photo in here at the beginning so you know what what's to come. So, because uh, yesterday I released a new collection or a range of speckled yarns that I call the Gelateria collection. So there are 10 different colorways of a speckled uh, sock yarn that I have sort of created and played with in the last few weeks. And um, yeah, so I'll, I, I think I'll go through those 10 colorways at the end of this episode. But Yes, so I would have put a photo here if anyone just wants to have a quick look and, you know, so you know what I'm referring to. And then um, if you hang around to the end, you get to see them um, closer up or um, just hang around for the knitting. So, like I said, I haven't been, really been doing very much. Um, nothing really exciting. It's just been a lot of getting the garden ready for spring and I've been organizing and baking and cleaning and tidying and just normal stuff. It's been so great with um, the days we've had that have been nice and sunny in spring weather. It's been great. Um, so I don't really, I don't, I have, I have been knitting in the evening and doing things, but I don't have a lot of finished items really. I have one thing I finished, but it's only half, half an item or half, half a finished thing. Of course, I finished one of my um, sock of roses sock. This is a um, sock designed by Maya Carlson. She's Maya's Manufacture on Instagram, and this was something she designed. For Yarbogon, which is a Swedish yarn label, I guess, and they have a blog and a lot of free patterns, um, and they have a lot of it in English as well. If you're interested, um, if you go to my project pages in Ravelry, every pattern that I talk about is linked there, and any yarn that I use, the needle size, and things like that. So um, feel free and go and have a look at Rosip Chick on. Ravelry and you can just click your way to things that you're interested in. So this is Rusen Sokkan in Swedish, Sock of Roses, and it was a pattern released in four parts. So the first part they've released on I think a Tuesday and it was up to here. And then there was a third part up to where the heel starts. Third part was the heel turn and the heel. And the fourth part was the leg or cup. And they were released with like maybe three days in between the parts. And I was quite good with following along. And now I think it's quite amazing that I knit this sock in that short amount of time. It's just really easy to do it in those chunks. Um, so I do that. I got a good fit. It has a lot of different sizes, just both with the width and the length of the foot and everything. And uh, how wide your ankle is and so that was really good and I was able to get a really good fit of this one which is always tricky when you do color work on a sock. I use some of my own hand dyed white gum wool sock yarn which is a 80% Tasmanian um, wool, super fine ethical sustainable wool and 20% nylon and um, 
I call it Tassi fingering, I think, in my Etsy shop. And there's a Tassi DK and a Tassi sock, which is this one. Um, I dyed this when I was in Sweden doing a workshop in July. So it's a sort of a, a bluey grey and then this sort of variegated pink. And they worked really well together, I think. Of course, I didn't know what the sock would look like when I started it. I just went with two colours that I thought had enough contrast. And uh, uh, I could see that there was going to be some colour work in the sock. And I knew that the white gum wool sock yarn is just really good for colour work. And because it has, it's not that um, shiny soft wool, it's soft, but it's more grabby and I've talked about this several times before so I just I'm very happy with using that and because it has the nylon in it it will still make the socks last so I have one I think I had that finished not long after the fourth clue was released and I cast on the second one straight away and did the, the toe I'm knitting them inside out because of the colour work, just to for my float to not get too uh, short. So that's what I normally do with the colour work, I just knit them inside out. So I only just started, and these are the yarn that I'm using, Kate Up. And just started it straight away after I finished the other one, but then I haven't touched it, I have not worked on it at all. And um, I think I just, I really enjoyed doing this one and I'm very happy with it and I definitely want to have a pair and be able to use it and it was fun to knit but I sort of felt like okay I've done that now and then I had other things that I wanted to work on so but it is ready so it's easy for me to just pick it up and knit, continue knitting on it when I feel like that's what I want to do. So that's the sock. So I finished one sock, but didn't really finish anything completely. Um, and then I've just been working on projects that I think you've seen before. I have, after not working on it for quite some time, been working on my Jindabyne shawl by Meg Gatsby. This is a kit that I bought from Adagio Mills. Um, at the Australian Sheep and Wool Show last year. And there's, oh, how much are these? Are they 50 gram balls? Oh, yes, there are. So there was, there were 150 grams of yarn in the kit. I'm on my second, or maybe I've used about half of that, or not quite half. And I am. Show you the correct size of this. I have done the first lace part, and then there's this garter stitch for a little bit, and I only have a couple more rows, I think, of the garter uh, before I do another one of these lace repeats here. And then there's another part of it after that lace repeat. So I'm getting there. For a long time I didn't work on it very much and I'm not sure if it's just because it doesn't, because it's a natural colour, I'm not drawn to working on it so much. I really like to work with colour and I just really enjoy just knitting, knitting when it's a colour and it, somehow it just, um, I don't know, stimulates my brain in a different way, I don't know. Um, but this is also lovely, I and I really like the look of it. I don't know, I just, I was in the lace repeat and I just stopped halfway through it and I didn't pick it up. But then I, when I did, I was, it was really quick and I really enjoyed working on it again. So I think now I'll, I'll, I'll keep going on it um, without too much, too many long breaks until it's finished, because I really like to have a finished item. So that was 
a shawl. So what am I knitting? I'm knitting on two pairs of socks, one shawl and one sweater jumper. Oh, I forget, forgot to tell you. I'll do that now. What I'm wearing is my Proline cardigan by Adrian Johnson, I think. I made this a while ago and how I have the camera, I can't really see me much, but uh, I made this in a, I think it's a Sennes yarn. It's a cotton and wool. And um, I haven't been wearing it very much, I must say. I think it's just, I can't wear a normal t-shirt underneath. It looks funny with this sort of V-shaped cardigan opening. Now I have it open because when I have it buttoned up, I just, it doesn't look right. <laughs> so, but I need to have sort of a, a more of a, showing more of my neck and chest <laughs> um, for it to look okay. And I'm not always comfortable with it, with that. Put a necklace on today to sort of fill up the space a bit. Um, so I haven't been wearing it very much, but I think maybe once it's a little bit warmer and in summer where, when I wear more dresses, I'll try to wear it with some dresses and maybe that will work. It's just such a beautiful um, fabric in that you create make, when you make this cardigan. And I love the colour. So hopefully I can figure out a way of um, wearing it and, and feeling comfortable and that it looks okay. Sip of tea. The other thing that I have been working on a lot, and it was it was actually a finished item until I hacked into it. So what I finished and then unfinished is this um, top down sweater by Anna and Heidi Pickles uh, that I have knit in a Pickles Merino tweed. I've shown it so many times now, but I'll show you again. This is the Pickles Merino Tweet and this was a present from my mum. She's in Sweden so getting a Norwegian yarn is a bit easier for her than it is for me. So this is 100% wool and Pickles is a Norwegian yarn brand and they also have um, Anna and Heidi Pickles. They have a lot of patterns and I think some of them are free on their website. But that might have changed. I remember a while ago when I looked for some of the patterns, some of the sizes were free, but I'm not sure if that's the case anymore. This is a pattern by um, Anna and Heidi Pickles. It's to called um, Top Down Sweater in English. And um, I purchased that because it was made for this yarn or designed with this yarn, but also it was um, The pattern that matched the gauge that I, I got. Um, I must say though, before I talk about what I've done to it, that um, the pattern was, I can't remember how much it cost me. I mean, patterns are not a huge amount of, of money to buy considering you know, the work behind them. But I felt like this was a pattern, or maybe it was, I can't actually remember, I should look it up, but maybe seven Australian dollars, something like that. So that's what you pay for a pattern that's, it's not, it's not the most expensive pattern, but it's not um, the cheapest either. And it's not a lot of money, but what I just wanted to say that I did expect more from the pattern, I think, because other sweater patterns that I have purchased have a lot of detail in them and I mean, this is just a very basic sweater, so I don't think that there is a lot of instructions to give, but the pattern was very basic. It was just a very short paragraph of what to do, and I think that if I was a beginner knitter, I would feel quite lost. It was not hard, it was just... Um, Yes, I, I, I guess I was just expecting more. I think it was the least detailed sweater pattern I have ever read through, ever seen. Because often, even if it's a simple pattern, 
um, a designer would put information in there that you might need as a beginner or links or just yes this pattern did not have a lot in it it was very basic um, and I was fine with that I didn't have a problem but um, I was I guess I was just surprised I was surprised I must say I think that's it because it is it is a company that I think make most of their money from selling the yarn and then they have patterns using the yarn and if it's that basic I'm surprised that they're the amount of money that they charge for it but um I understand designing um takes a lot of time it should be you should be well paid if you're designing anyway <laughs> um so I had this all complete um I had done it all and I had 30 grams left of my 300 grams that I had originally of this yarn it's a fingering weight and then um, I was never quite happy with the neckband. It looked a bit loose and floppy. So when I did the, the sleeve cuff and the bottom cuff, I went down to a 2 millimeter needle. In the body I did it on a 2.75 millimeter needle and that was what I used for the neckband as well. I didn't use a smaller needle for that. And I thought, ah, oh, I completed it all. I, weaved in all the ends except for my neckband and I left it overnight after everything was else was finished and then in the morning I thought no I'm always going to ask myself would it have looked better if I had done it in a smaller needle size so I decided to undo the neckband and of course it's a top down sweater so undoing it was not easy and this tweed yarn is quite grabby and it doesn't undo very easily at all so I unpicked the whole cast on and I thought after that it would be easy to undo it but it was not it was just not coming out so in the end I grabbed a pair of scissors and I just cut the neckband half the way down cut around and now I just have all these it's just not going anywhere. It's, I've picked it up on a needle, so it won't all unravel. But I, I don't, yeah, it's just stuck. It's like all lots of little knots around. Uh, so I think, after thinking about this for some time, that I'm just going to pick up stitches around and knit a new neckband and I'll just leave this stuff because it's sort of it won't go anywhere it's a bit like when you um, do a steak I think and you cut into your knitting and it's you just let it sit there and if it come undone a bit I'll just have to take those ends and weave them in if if needed but it's just oh it's a total headache this <laughs> Um, but I'll, I'll just pick up the stitches and I will do a new neckband on a three millimeter, no, on a two millimeter needle in a twisted rib like that. And I might make it a little bit longer than it was originally because the neck, uh, neck is quite wide and open. So if I can get it to come in a bit more, I'd be happy. But it is completely finished except for that. And I'm very happy with it. It's, um, sort of a medium tight fit I guess it's not very fit fitted and it's not a boxy sweater it's sort of in between I guess and I didn't make it very long I like it to be sort of a on the hip maybe hip length um so I did that I love this yarn so this is what I mean with um knitting on the shawl in a natural gray color compared to knitting with this happy fun um, pink with all the colored tweety bits there it's just this just makes me happy <laughs> so yes I will pick this up now that I have decided that that's what I'll do and hopefully it won't all unravel and come undone and be a mess and now I'm I'm, I'm very happy 
that I've, I have done this one. I think I'll wear it um, quite a bit. Um, I'm happy that I know that I can get 300 grams of a fingering weight yarn and actually make a garment out of that. And just like a basic, basic jumper or basic sweater. Because um, I, I quite like that. Uh, so now I have plans for more things. And I would like to try the no frill sweater, which is very similar to this one, I think. Um, even just to see the, the difference in how they've written the pattern. Yes, but that has a different gauge, um, I think. So I'll just see. But next time, next time I'll be wearing this. I think. <laughs> I think so. I want to. Uh, so that was that one. And then actually the next thing, which is the last thing I have to share with you, um, I only showed you last time that it was something I was going to make, or maybe I just show you the yarn. Um, so what is this? Is my new pair of all natural socks. I received a beautiful package from a viewer in Germany. Uh, she sent me a whole lot of uh, sock yarn that is no nylon or natural fiber and material. And one of the skeins that she sent to me was this from, it's from Crafting and Treats and it's a teas water wool. Pure cheese water lamb's wool from a single farm woolen spun in Yorkshire. Not superwash. And um, it's from Crafting and Treats. And this is the skein. This is the vintage teal colorway. So I started on a pair of socks with this. And the ball was all already in a cake. The yarn was already in a cake. And I didn't want to get my winder or anything out. I just wanted to start. So what I did was that I took a button and I started from the inside and the outside um, to knit a sock from each and with the button there to take the inside and outside yarn end through. It just means that you don't get a, a tangle. So I did that and I started a pair of socks. And these are the socks. And you might recognize this pattern. This is actually the pattern from Hermione's Everyday Socks, which is an Erika Luda pattern, a free pattern on Ravelry. So that's the stitch pattern. And because I'm doing them two from the same cake, I, what I do is I've marked one sock and then I I need one round on that one and then one on the next and I just um, alternate them between every round. Um, so it's not the quickest knit. <laughs> not the quickest knit, but it's 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 fun. It they look like they're coming out a bit big again. And what I always do, I do my 55 stitches, um, which normally fit me. And this is what, what I also did on the wool and linen socks that I showed you last time. I think I had finished them last time. And they are also too big. So I don't know if it is when it's all natural and non-superwash and no nylon that they just come out a bit bigger. But I don't know. Um, we'll see what they will be like. But anyway, I'm working on the leg, and it's the Hermione's Everyday Sock textured pattern. However, I'm not making the entire pattern of Hermione's Everyday Sock. What I found, because I was looking through Ravelry and searching for um, no nylon or natural socks and patterns for that, and I found a pattern, and I'll have to look at uh, the name of it, it's called Socks with Super Strong Heel and Toe by Kathleen Trainor. And that was a pattern I found. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. And she has a method of using two 
strands of yarn for heels and toes to make them stronger. And it's not just doubling, I think it involves some slip stitches and I'm not sure. I read through it, so um, that heel and toe is what I plan to do on these socks and I thought I might even uh, use this as the second strand of yarn and this is also all natural sock yarn it is a wool and nettle sock yarn so I thought that would definitely um, improve the durability and the wear I think of the sock so I might do that but I haven't decided yet but I think it would look fun with that bit of colour there uh, so that that's those and that's all that I'm I'm working on. Yes. Okay. Another thing that I have been working on that I actually forgot about um, is a design project that I have uh, taken back up after letting it sit for probably a year and a half or more. Uh, this. Um, was a design a pair of mittens and I show these so if you watched the episode probably <laughs> a year and a half ago now uh, you've seen these mittens I, I made a, a mitten pattern using white gum wool in my own hand dyed white gum wool this was the urban glam colorway so I made these and I had a size for me size for my then three-year-old and I made a size for my then seven-year-old I think she must have been and this is the Cascade G20 I used for this sample so I had those and I had another larger pair um, that my husband uh, that fit my husband and then I had them test knitted and I had some a few corrections to do and I just never got around to it because I had this underlying feeling that it was not quite right. And the problem was the gauge. I'm a loose knitter and I made these at a, quite a loose gauge, I think 18 stitches per 10 centimeters. And a lot of the, the test knitters had problems with that gauge or problem with the, the feel of, of that loose gauge in the mitten so I decided that okay I was going to take this design back up and have it completed by the end of this year so it's been on my to-do list all this year and I finally um, got around to starting it so what I've done is I've tightened up the gauge so I've probably what did I get? It's like 22 stitches per 10 centimeters instead of 18. And um, getting a much um, nicer, firmer fabric. But what this meant was that all the sizes need to be uh, redone. And how it's worked out is that um, when I have, I made the, the adult small to medium size, and it turned out like this, which is what used to be the large child size. So basically, by redoing, by, by tightening up the gauge, I now get a size smaller knitting the numbers for a size. If I need a small adult size, I get a large child size. But all the length um, of things have to be in rep uh, pattern repeats, have to be. Um, changed in the pattern so I did one first and this is my um, hand dyed white gum wool I had some underweight skeins of this DK uh, so I used them so I made this one which fits my daughter nicely so I just made it according to the the numbers that I had for the adult small to medium size and then I just adjusted um, pattern repeats and lengths and things like that um, to correspond to the child large size. So I've done that, so that's completed, I've made changes in the pattern and now I'll make the second one using the new pattern that I have written out. 
and I made one that was originally the larger size but with the new gauge it's a women's small to medium size and same there that's all corrected in the pattern and um, I just have to um, make the second one using that pattern to see that it all works out and um, so I have those two sizes and if I now need the original large children's size I'm hoping I'll get something similar to the original smallest size so that's next to do I just need some more yarn to do that um, this time I'm going to make them all in the white gum wool DK and I think that will just make it easier with gauge and everything so yes that's one thing I've been working on and hopefully there'll be a pattern <laughs> released before the end of the year I won't rush it but I really want this done and I want to do it properly I want to have at least three sizes and I want to have it tech edited and everything so that it's a pattern that I'm happy with putting out there um, so that's one more thing. As the now, last thing of sort of the knitting content, I'll show you what's coming up next. Um, and I have that in this beautiful bag back here. And I've shown you this before. This was a part of my swap with Sandra of Craftfulness. Um, Craftfulness on Etsy and she has a podcast. And someone actually asked me uh, after I showed it um, where the bag came from, who made it. And it is Sandra who made the bag and she sells bags in her shop. And hand dyed yarn. Um, so in here uh, I have a future sock project and um, the sock project is going to be part of the Strictly Sock Along and Strictly Sock Along is hosted by Ali of Little Drops of Wonderful which is a, um, a great podcast. Ali is just um, never met her in person but she seems to be wonderful and um, just beautiful person and you can sense that when you watch her on the screen and Ali is hosting the Strictly Sock Along and she did for the first time last year and the Strictly Sock Along is a sock knit along or crochet along that you do um, during the Strictly Come Dancing season in the UK and um, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of rules and rule bending uh, coming with this sock along and just go and check it out in the little drops of wonderful podcast um, group on Ravelry if you're curious but basically you knit your socks while watching Strictly Come Dancing during the, the season up until Christmas but there's a lot of ways of getting around um, when you're knitting time on these socks a little bit anyway we don't have Strictly Come Dancing or any program like that in Australia. There used to be a show like that, but it's no longer produced. Um, but I'm still going to um, join in on the cow. I can watch um, the Strictly Come Dancing um, on online, or I can find other ways of getting around the rules and making my socks for this sock along. So for my socks for this knit along, I'll, um, I wanted something ballroom dance and um, sparkly, festive disco feeling. And I had one skein like that in my stash, and that's this one. This is a little star, and it's from the Southwest Trading Company. And I purchased that, I think, in 2015. Uh, workshop in Hobart, the stash cupboard that's no longer um, no longer trading, no, it's no longer there. Um, but that's a very nice sparkly sock. It is 75% superwash nylon and 25% nylon with Lurex. And this is only a 50 gram skein, but with um, contrasting heels and toes, I should be able to make myself a pair of socks out of this. And um, I thought I'd use just this Fortissima 
in a plain dark grey to go with that because I couldn't find anything else that would go with it in my stash. And if I find time to make more than one pair of socks, I have one other sparkly sock yarn in my stash. And that's this one that you've seen before uh, that I bought in Budapest. And uh, I made a pair of socks for my daughter out of this and uh, contrasting with toes and cuff. So I have quite a bit left of this and it will be enough for um, another pair of socks. So I might do a second pair using that. But I'm very excited to use this. Originally I bought it um, thinking, oh, I'll make a pair of, of socks for for my daughters, uh, one of my daughters, and I never got around to it. And now I'm quite excited to actually use it for myself. So there will be my Strictly socks. And Cast On is during the first live show on the 22nd of September. I might watch that show online a bit later and cast them on then or I might just watch some other dance related thing on the 22nd and then cast on my socks. It's a really really fun um, knit along or crochet along because there's just when you read the shatter thread and there's just so much the rule bending is just so much fun to read what people <laughs> come up with. <laughs> now I think I just want to show you my new uh, range of yarns that I just released yesterday or colorways. So it's the Gelateria collection I called it and this was a um, right it's a range of 10 speckled colorways and they were inspired by a warmer season coming up here in Australia and also by um, some beautiful gelato that I had while in Europe in July this year and yes I was just inspired and started doing a few colorways and then I just added on and yes I felt like I was I had a gelateria at the end of it with all my different flavors of gelato and I put them up on Etsy yesterday I've actually already sold out of some of the colorways and I'll I'll make more they're all repeatable I can make more and I have done them all on my delicious sock yarn base, which is an 85% Australian merino, 15% nylon. And it's a beautiful sock, beautiful soft sock yarn that you can use for anything from accessories to garments to socks. It's just re really versatile, and that's the main reason why it's one of my yarn bases in my shop. So I thought I'll show you the 10 different um, flavours <laughs> that I have. And the first one I'll show you is my chocolate hazelnut, which I really love. And I'm not normally a person that's drawn to browns, but with the greens and reds in this one, I just think, think it's so beautiful. I love different greens and browns in there. So that's the shock hazelnut. Then, of course, I had to have a black licorice colorway so they're black speckles and splashes on the natural base and I, I just think um, that will just knit up really fun and I'm thinking pair of socks and then having a crazy colored contrasting heel and toe I think that would be fun so that's black licorice and then I have boysenberry which is Black speckles, but also purple speckles. So that's a really fun one. And they would work together, the black licorice and the boysenberry. Maybe they taste nice together too. <laughs> and then um, a blueberry, which is only the pinks and purples. There, this blueberry. I think I call it blueberry and cream and then a raspberry swirl so hot pink speckles and splashes on that one and that all looks like that together with the blueberry and then we have a mango and peach gelato or sorbet so that's 
colours. Um, they are uh, they just these colours just make me so happy, and they feel really nice for the, you know, the spring and the summer coming. And I can imagine making a pair of socks out of one of these speckly, speckled colourways, and just light, bright, and fun knitting. And that's with the raspberry swirl. And then, of course, I had to have a vanilla. So this is the vanilla bean colorway. And just different um, speckles of, of yellow, almost brown or mustardy speckles in some parts there. So that's the vanilla bean, which is really fun. And that's what it looks like with the peach mango, mango peach, and with the raspberry swirl. So they're, they're a fun combination. And then I have a caramelized, sorry, a caramelized pear colorway, which I also think is fun. Like this came out really great. So it has the mustardy and uh, yellow and green speckles and splashes. Yeah, that came out really fun. And that's what it looks like with the Vanilla bean. I think that would be a nice combination of flavors. Caramelized pear and vanilla bean. Yum. That's those. And then I'll have a peppermint, which is um, a flavor. I, I, I put these sort of minty splashes through it and then the speckles of it, the turquoise, to give it a Pepperminty feel. This looks like that with the caramelized pear and the vanilla bean. And then the last one, I had to have something fun, something for the children, <laughs> and that's the bubble gum, bubble gum colorway. So this is the speckles of turquoise and tones of turquoise on that. And with the mint, it looks like that. So that's those 10 flavors or colorways that I um, have in the Gelateria collection. And uh, I have so much, had so much fun uh, creating them and I love them all together. And I think there's a lot of potential there for, for projects that can be knit up using those. So I'm very happy with those. And there's also quite a few semi-solids, semi -solids, um, and tonals in my shop at the moment that would go with those colorways. And that's I think is all um, that I will share with you today. I have to get on with work <laughs> and um, yes I can't think of any other news or updates or anything like that. One thing actually I can mention, and if you, <laughs> well, you you won't know about this if you've left the episode earlier um, on, but one event that's coming up is a um, Tassie Wool Lovers Tour that is organised by Wool Gatherings, Karen, and part of that tour I will have a live recording or podcast recording with an audience I guess it is so I'll do my podcast where I have the the people that are on the tour they will be audience I guess when I do the podcast so that will be interesting hopefully that will <laughs> work out I actually have an audience here today as well I have to put a photo in it's quite funny <laughs> you can see what I see it's just a practice run with audience but yes I'll I'll, I'll do a podcast recording as a part of the, the tour and I'll also have a pop-up shop I guess after the podcasting so that's something I'm looking forward to a lot and that will happen I have had I keep having questions um, about if um, I guess more for local people or people that come and visit in Tasmania have requests and questions about if I can open have an open studio 
and people can come and have a look at my at the yarn that I, that I have in the shop and that I sell and people can come and see it in person and and, and maybe purchase from me directly and um, as much as I would love that I would love to have an open studio day or maybe even like a sit and knit in my garden and I'll have skeins available for viewing and purchasing I would love that but um, unfortunately I do not have the capability and the setup to have just like individuals come and have a look at my stock the the stock is just not in a way um, that I can I don't have Space to display it really and it would be a lot of work for me to get things out for the one person coming to have a look and um, maybe if I can find a way of having an open studio open garden um, uh, sit and knit event that will work out because I'm, I'm, I'll be really happy to to organize that and set that up and put a time into that um, but I can't unfortunately do it just for um, the one person coming to visit um, unfortunately I just don't have the setup to do that um, might be a different thing if if you sort of know what you would like in the shop and if we can meet at a knitting group or something like that and I can just show you sort of a small section selection of what I have that you know that you're interested in so uh, maybe something like that but Unfortunately, I can't open the doors to my studio just for um, the individual visits, really. Um, okay, that's that's it. That's all. I have to work. Um, I I hope you in, enjoyed this episode, and um, please uh, any comments and feedback always welcome. I enjoy this so much. You don't even understand how much this podcast means to me to be able to have this time to myself and with you to myself with you <laughs> but it's it's my time and it's my thing and it's really really important and I've been doing this since my daughter my youngest daughter was one she's about to turn four and um, no she's about to turn five sorry uh, and yes it, it has been a, this podcast has been really really important to me through these years um, when I feel like most of the time I'm just mum and I'm doing all the mum things all the time. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for, for doing this with me. Um, yes, as I said, it means a lot to me. Um, yes, that's all for this time. Hopefully I'm back again in about two weeks or so and hopefully I'll have some beautiful tulips to share with you then and some more knitting hopefully a new sweater to wear and maybe an almost finished knitting mitten design okay now that I've said it and I've shown them to you I have to get this completed okay thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being part of this and enjoy the rest of your day or your evening and um, keep knitting Keep doing what makes you happy. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.